This is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. We are your hosts, Lehman, Jay, and Mark. And today we will be continuing with the Tharkold Cosm cards, part two, which are cards 11 through 20. Uh, before we jump in, we did want to remind everybody that we have an email, torgdcd at gmail.com. And if you wish to send us an email and have questions, we'll answer your questions. If you have comments, we'll read the email and probably comment back on those. So, again, that is torgdcd at gmail.com. Um, so, we don't have any emails to go over. So, let's get into the Cosm cards. Uh, Tharkold Cosm card 11 is Neil which is the same as we talked about in part one, which was uh, Cosm card six. So 11 is the same, play at any time. For the rest of the scene, intimidation is favored. Um, so if you want to hear our viewpoints on that, you can listen to the previous episode. So uh, let's move on to 12, Supremacy. I'm just making sure this one also was card number two. Mm -hmm. So that's another one. So um, I think there are a few of these. So this might be a little shorter episode. So number two, uh, 12 is the same as two supremacy. So again, look at the previous episode or listen to the previous episode for that. Uh, moving on. 13, Law of Pain. I believe this is a new one. So play at the start of combat. All damage taken during this combat is increased by plus one shock. All Storm Knights gain one possibility at the end of combat. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on the Law of Pain? I like this one. It, um, it basically just gives every attack the painful weapon uh, bonus. Um, it's probably not going to be a huge, huge problem for the PCs, but it might. Like, unless you have someone who dips into a lot of vitality powers, usually shock isn't what does people in. Uh, however, with painful weapons, suddenly it can. Like, even just taking one or two extra shock every hit can really add up. So this can add the danger, but not an extreme amount of danger, which is why it's nice that it's uh, just one possibility. And that also does extra shock to the enemies as well. Um, I know some people also like to use the mobs rule, where you don't necessarily keep track of, like, okay, we did two shock to every single guy, uh, instead, we're just going to okay. If we did six, if there was, if we did two shock to six guys, and these guys have a shock limit of six, that just takes one out, and I don't have to worry about it. So this can also dr drastically quicken combats if you're just fighting a bunch of mooks like that. And it does bring the danger to uh, the if it's against like a boss character that they might need to actually soak uh, <laughs> because of shock uh, because enough little hits could potentially shock out an enemy uh unless of course they're you know a robot or something like that so yeah i like this one it's pretty good flavorful i like how in um you know a lot of the expansion or like booster cards actually reference the different laws of each cosm so i think it's very flavorful mark your thoughts on the law of pain um i like this one this is this one is very much tharkold um it i can't decide if it's if i like it a little bit or a lot one shock is doesn't seem like a lot but as jay pointed out over time if you get a bunch of hits that can add up especially if you're a shock monkey that that uses shock to activate a bunch of your powers and you know you're you're going to take shock to do things you have to have the shock to spend in order to be able to activate your powers and all of a sudden that one point might be important because you no longer you only have two points left and you need three and you can't whatever you it is you want to do um it, i will point out that it's it is uh plus it, it's increased by one shock for damage taken so you know just because you got a hit there's a lot of people that mitigate damage well 
um, high reality characters who soak or avoid damage and don't have to worry about it. But uh, one possibility either seems like not enough or the shock seems like not enough. And I can't ever decide. And I, I think it's relational or, or situational. If it's if they're mitigating the shock well and it doesn't really affect them, then it always seems like it's, eh, this one's not really much. But if it's just beating the crap out of them, like, oh, that's not enough possibilities for the damage they're taking because just this is wearing them out. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a good card. I like it. It just... Yeah, how it gets used is going to vary depending on the situation, the, the dice that are rolled. Um, I agree. Um, the one possibility is good. This would be way too out of whack if it was two or three possibilities. And, Jay, you're absolutely right with the, the, the big bosses. Sometimes that's the main way that I've seen big bosses get knocked out if they could take shock in the first place because the players could never do enough wounds and then they are spending possibilities to soak shock so that they don't get knocked out. So mm -hmm. that's kind of fun. And then, yeah, normally, nor and I say this, normally shock isn't a problem, but all it takes is a couple of fatigues with some armor and have a couple of hits with this and people without a good spirit without any adjustments to their shock, they can uh, be KO'd as, as well. So, yeah. That's a good point, actually. Good. Uh, does this work on fatigue or shock that you spend to yeah, power so things? I would think not, right? It's damage. I wouldn't so, count fatigue because... But I, I meant, like, fatigue as in you're just taking that fatigue. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I figured this is no. a good point to bring it up. I was going As soon as you anyway. said that, though, that occurred to me, too. And I was like, ooh, wow, this would just... That would suck a lot if you counted it on, on the fatigue results on the card, too. But now, reading it, it just says all damage taken during this combat. So damage could be from any source, including fatigue, possibly. So, yeah, that'll make this card really worth it. <laughs> I mean, do you count fatigue as damage, or is it just it, it fatigue? Does, it does damage to you. Um, it's physical damage. Anything does it? That, anything that uh, does wounds and or shock damage is considered physical damage. That was the big. And what about spending shock? Spending shock, suffering. Shock. Ooh, that's a good one. I have to take shock in order to activate my my wow. ability, and so I'm spending two shock to do something. Do I did I just spend three? So game master, that's something you get to go. <laughs> I, I would say, whatever you decide. Let your players know before they activate those powers. Um, otherwise, it could seem quite bad. It, to me, it says all damage. So while when I read this at first, I thought, yeah, that would be damage inflicted by opposing attacks. Damage is damage. I don't think there's really... Fatigue says... Uh, inflicts fatigue two inflicts... points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, do it. Yeah, inflicts two points of shock to every character on the afflicted side. Doesn't say it's damage. This represents exhaustion, fear, stress, bleeding, or minor injuries that happen between more serious attacks. Sometimes armor or equipment might increase the amount of shock da might increase the amount of shock damage caused oh. by fatigue results as well. Oh, there we go. So, yep. the D -word. <laughs> this card just got a lot more potent <laughs> dangerous so, so now we're on that maybe one possibility is a bit low <laughs> yes I, I still think a lot of it would depend on the situation are you getting those fatigue yeah. results do you have those vitality powers etc but no no matter what it fits the theme of tharkold and it meshes well with the the the, the trope of the well is it gonna call if you if you spend shock to activate your stuff does this compound that did we just decide that? I would say by rules as written, or at least according to the FAQ, yes. Because there was many types of discussions on what physical damage was when people were saying. Um, there, because in the books, when it talks about it, it only gives the examples of melee, missile, energy weapons and firearms it doesn't talk about like you're casting of spells you're invoking of miracles you're manifesting of psionic abilities and the clarification was if it causes 
shock and or wounds it is physical damage or physical attack so that's do you want a real edge for. case question now <laughs> let's go for the edge case <laughs> All right, so if we're saying that spending the... Uh, say I want to activate an ability that costs two shock, and this increases the amount of shock damage that does to three, but if I have something like, say, a Vav uh, Suppressor, which normally you cannot reduce the cost you're spending on shock to activate abilities, mm -hmm. but could you use it to, to reduce this extra plus one pain damage? Now, on that, Being that I'd it is say, a pain suppressor. I'd say yes. I would say yes, too, because that's not the shock needed to activate the ability. Right. This is extra shock on top of it. It's yep. a rider, so that's how I would yep. go. You still have to take the shock that's required to shock, activate yes. the, the ability, but the, as Lehman, Lehman just called it a rider, this rider <laughs> damage you could absolutely stuff into your, your pain suppressor, I think. Absolutely. Or your... The hex, uh, uh, cyber papacy. Um, oh, the, what's that? The, the hexer, hexer mark w w three, two, one. Yeah, that, one of them. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, there's one, two, one. and three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, cool, fun, fun, fun card. After we discussed it, <laughs> 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 it was a fun card. Kind of sneaky, then, but now it's like, oh yeah, this could this could really uh, bring the pain, <laughs> the law of pain, makes sense. Huh? Yeah. Who would have thunk? Okay, moving on. Card number 14, Law of Ferocity. Um, play at the start of combat. All of your actions this combat must be melee or unarmed attacks. Attack is always an improved action for you. Gain two possibilities at the end of combat. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on the Law of Ferocity? I, mean, I enjoy this card. Uh, it's a fun card, but it is very wildly different uh, in how useful it is, depending on what your character is all about. If you're already a melee character, this is great. <laughs> um, if you're not, it, you might, you're might you probably not going to play it. But I do love it when a player who is like a wizard or something plays this card and then just like runs in and starts slapping. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great. Um, they don't usually accomplish much, and usually they only play it when it's fairly obvious they're not going to get like completely wiped but still i like it it's funny uh but yeah it, it really depends on your character and your players as to whether this card gets played or not um and at first glance saying that okay a melee character this is an obvious no-brainer but the attack is the only thing they can do like all of your actions must be melee or unarmed attack that means you cannot you can't multi-action with something else. It says all of your actions. So there might come a point where you want or need to do something else, but you can't. So it can be quite dangerous. Uh, but yeah, I like it. Mark, your thoughts on Law of Ferocity. So here's a question for you. If you play this, are you locked in? Card hits the table and you're done. You're the only things you're doing now is melee or unarmed. Period. Or is this a if then statement that if I play this card, the start of a combat, and I do only, I, I get I get reading it as written, mm -hmm. not necessarily. But the question is, if I then do only melee and unarmed attacks, then I get my possibilities. But if I in the middle let's say one of those pesky DSRs pops up that I have to then uh, deal with. And I have the only skill set that can deal with it. If I choose to do something other than a melee or an armed attack, I have voided my two possibilities or am I not allowed to do that at all? I have, you see, you, you see, follow my question. Yeah, I understand your question. Yes. I would say if a game master wished to interpret it that way at their table. Okay. How I read the card, though, is you play this and you've made the decision. My character is succumbing to the law of ferocity and they are attacking and nothing else except attacking. Okay. And then they're going to get those two possibilities. So it's not like... like I kind of like that reading. Gonna, they're not going to multi-action and attack and a maneuver. They're not going to, you know, do this and that. They are going to... They can still attack. move. 
Yeah, you can still move to get to that next attack. <laughs> yeah, but all your actions, <laughs> movement isn't necessarily an action, it's movement. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay. I mean, it's like the barbarian who's gone into rage and yep. all they can't all they can mm -hmm. do is rage. Okay, I'm cool with that. I, I like it. It's it's another good law of ferocity. It's another good Tharkold themed card that feels very Tharkold mm -hmm. that, you know, I've just I've lost it. I'm and I'm just going to roll with that ferocious flow now and i'm i'm with jay i i would love to see you know the the wizard of the 22 towers boom <laughs> he just gets freaking knocked bam <laughs> they pushed him too far <laughs> that's right when you push the wizard too far yeah so I like the card. I think that it fits the, the flavor, and I definitely would do, if you play this card, you're attacking. That's what's happening at this combat. You're, you've made the decision. At the start of combat. At the, yeah, at the start of combat. Uh, moving on. Card number 15, Evil Conserved. When an ally takes any unsoaked damage, inflict an additional wound. Your ally gains one possibility, and you gain three possibilities. So, Jay, what are your thoughts on Evil Conserved? Well, we've talked previously about how my group loves playing cards that screw each other over um, on each other. So they love this. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that they like to do. Now, um, ally is kind of, it could be anybody. Right, and it doesn't say it has to be on a possibility rated character. Uh, and I have had them play them on just an ord who has no wounds, uh, or, or sorry, with one, like one wound, you know. Uh, so it just killed them. Uh, but they got three possibilities, so <laughs> Tharkhold's dangerous. Uh, so yeah, I really like this one, but it is like kind of rough. Um, and it really kind of depends also on like the access to magical healing your group has. Um, if you take a second, if someone takes a second wound and you just heal it the next turn, what is it? You know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it does say ally, so you can't play it on yourself to get the sweet four possibilities. Um, but overall, I like it. There is the potential for some shenanigans, especially with that uh, masochism uh, mm -hmm. thing. And technically... This does count as you inflicting a wound on someone. So as per Tharkold world laws, you can get some shock back right, you from that. <laughs> right. Mark, your thoughts on evil conserved? Um, it doesn't say it goes away once it's done. When an ally takes an unsoaked damage. Right. So how long does this persist? Is this, I mean, it's a one time. I, I read it as a one time. I'm going to give you one possibility to mm -hmm. the person that takes the damage and then you get three but it doesn't say that and so i could, could i could conceivably see someone drop this down and then expect every time i take damage oh. you know and just start <laughs> map pile. that's not how i'm gonna administer this card no. but um it, as pointed out an ally and i that becomes that becomes a game master call just because just because the person you're talking to isn't attacking you does not make them friendly. And just because they're friendly, that doesn't make them an ally. An ally would be someone who would work with you mm -hmm. towards your goals and your ends. It, just because they're not turning you over to the local pride, um, they're not that doesn't mean that they're your ally. So I, the the oh, there's a guy in the corner. Let's just you know, blow him away with a wound and then everybody gets, yeah. you know, I get three possible. That's not how that, I, you have to, you have to hurt the ones you love. So. Yeah. I, I would read it that way too. That the ally needs to be an ally. Um, I would also do it as a, this is a one and, and done. You, you, somebody, an ally takes a wound, you give them additional wound, you get your possibilities, they get their possibility. And then the cards off the, the table. It's not a, keep doing it um to, to me it's almost like a mini trap because that's kind of <laughs> except for they get a, they at least get a possibility on like trap which they could get take all the damage and not take one um and yeah if you're if you are giving it uh it says inflict a wound 
an additional wound, you're kind of the inflictor, so you could heal shock. So <laughs> that's kind of amusing. I think that's actually why very, it got used in my game. Very uh, <laughs> Tharkoldy, uh, you know, using somebody else's pain for your own benefit. So let's move on to card number 16, The Law of Haunts. When played, the GM may choose any at any time to make a nearby structure collapse. All heroes must text, test dexterity or become very vulnerable. All Storm Knights gain one possibility. So, Jay, Law of Haunts. Uh, this one's kind of meh, in my opinion. In theory, this is the kind of thing a GM could do at any time, whenever they want anyway. And... Testing dexterity, difficulty 10, not the hardest because Storm Knights have a tendency to have pretty decent dexterity. And even if you fail, you're what? Very stymied for, or sorry, very vulnerable for one round. Um, it, it's not the biggest. Now, if, if you work this into a combat, sure, but is the player going to do that? You think? Uh, now, this is the one when the player plays it, you don't necessarily. Uh, have to play it like resolve it immediately mm -hmm. you can wait until they're into a combat but also you get to the situation where okay we're in the middle of the blasted lands driving on the road there's no buildings anywhere around we'll play this okay I guess there's a building now and everyone's like hmm what's gonna happen here um yeah so i'm just not a huge fan of this one mark your thoughts on law of haunts uh, I like this card. I don't, I don't like the name, uh, because the name to me doesn't go along with the text and the effect. It, it has a different idea or feel to me, um, as far as what a law of haunts should be versus what the text of the card says. Now my hang up on the name aside, I like this card from the idea that I always do this in combat. You play this down, you lay this down, and it's going to happen when you're in combat or in a DSR or in a chase, somewhere where the very vulnerable is actually going to matter. Because, I mean, you're going to get a possibility that very vulnerable needs to matter. And the only time, the I won't say the only, the majority of the time that that's going to matter is going to be in combat. Um, now, to Jay's point, if you're out in the middle of the Blasted Lands, you don't have buildings around do you have any trees okay trees just start falling over for no reason okay well i mean nuclear radiation does stuff to things i mean you, you just you can go with that or you're in the middle of the blast lands no trees low scrub blah 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 what what's going to click how about sinkhole or sudden geyser of steam or you know something you can have eruptions up whatever as long as you can have some stuff flying around or people falling and cause a dexterity check because they're not as nimble as they were before flash flood sure i don't know be, be be creative but i i like the card just because you're gonna the, this is the players giving the gm license to do bad things to them whenever they want and I think you should take that license and run with it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, m my, um, oh, what do I want to say? I, I would even add to it using the law of haunts as a, even if there's no structures out there, maybe there's just a junker that's, you know, broken down in the side of the road and all of a sudden the, the door pops off and slams into you know the group or you know something <laughs> and actually have some ghosts that decided to throw something at the the party um i like that the game master chooses at any time and this is also could be nice for the game master with all the other cards that sometimes require you to remember them and stuff you just have to remember to play this but once it's played it's a roll get your possibilities and it's over um, very much like the evil conserved so some of those cards are nice to have in the mix because while they might not be awesome in themselves or provide very big and, and deep storytelling and stuff it kind of uh, brings in what you have to come up with as a game master it's just like oh yeah this happens now i don't have to worry about it anymore so Moving on to 17, the law of 
Cynicism. Play when drawn. The GM may discard this card at any time to make the hero's action fail. That hero then gains two possibilities. So, Jay, the law of cynicism. I think most GMs would like this one. Uh, gives you a little bit of control over the situation. Um, some players might view it as a personal attack uh, these days, but um, I think as long as your group knows what's going on and they trust you all trust each other and you're in it to play a game and have fun and remember, then it should be fine. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it it comes back to that discussion we had long ago about the GM finally getting to feel what it's like to play an opponent fails card, right? Um, and then I like how it's a hero. It's not necessarily the person who plays the card, mm -hmm. and it creates a lot of tension because people are kind of waiting for it to happen. Uh, and then the GM, you have to kind of pick a good point to use it. And you don't want to necessarily use it at the point where it's just going to murder somebody, but the point where it's more dramatically important. But yeah, I really like this card. Mark, your thoughts on Law of Cynicism? I love this card. I mean, as many times as the opponent fails has been played on me as a GM, in fact, just Wednesday night in recently, uh, that in, in such a a way as to just oh yeah whatever okay oh opponent fails ah what Mark's thinking Yo. huh they didn't spend a possibility I wonder why <laughs> <laughs> yeah I wasn't I didn't even catch it and and <laughs> I was okay cool well this is gonna be opponent fails son of a bitch player usually um, has a smug look on their face too oh yeah no they did <laughs> they did they absolutely did but this I like this from the standpoint of. It, and this is not a let's let's go kill you know this is my my nuclear button I'm going to kill a, a hero now be judicious in your application of this going in but it's also you could look at it as a get out of jail free card for your your king daddy o evil or your your big bad whoever you're using that you know when the the hero finally the, the the your melee striker that just has been dealing two and three and four wounds every blow and you're done you're out of possibilities and can't soak anymore and they think ah i got him now here comes he's taking two wounds and i'm gonna put four on him boom he's done and oh, oh, opponent fails no you're not you can get out of you know get out of jail free with that one and you last another round so i mean it it, it is a great card from the standpoint of I, you know, I can negate that. Oh, oh, or here's another one. You've got a mind controller, or you've got someone who who blasts tech mm -hmm. constructs, Robert. Um, <laughs> and you don't want this particular tech construct taken over, blasted, or otherwise taken out of the combat. Well, here, this that attempt to take over your construct construct fails, or that attempt to control mind control your villain fails, and so you can just you know, here's here you go. So I, I like the card a lot. It's, it's just like it's another one in truth arc old fashion that the players give the GM license to do bad things to them. Yes. Okay. So I have a story. This card is <laughs> very much, very much harkens back to the heroes, hero fails card, uh, destiny card in classic Torg, um, where it was the same thing the hero would play this card the game master would keep it and then when the game master wanted a hero to fail then boom they played this card and the the hero got i think in that it might have been three possibilities i could be wrong i think three is the number um and i had a player that just he would never use drama uh, let, let's take a step back in classic torg they did not have a difference between experience and possibilities so mm -hmm. you could use your possibilities to do all your cool things like boost action and soak damage, but you w wouldn't want to use them all because you could use them as experience to increase your skills uh, and attributes and stuff. So I had a player who he just would keep all the drama cards and all the heroes cards because those cards, you could use them like they're used now, but you could also, if you kept them at the end of an act, you would gain uh, three possibilities and yep. so he would let things drag out he wouldn't help people because he was keeping those f 
and his thing was any chance of getting a possibility i am going to get a possibility so he played that hero's failed card because that was going to give him three possibilities and the uh the adventure that they were on there was a uh, adventure in classic torg where the west and east living land realms were going to unite in some place i think in ohio or something like that and the the whole point was to stop the stele from being activated and when that storm knight was going to succeed to keep that stele not activated he failed and the living land east and west realms <laughs> boom were there <laughs> completely completely blew their minds evil game master <laughs> move you might think but hey they knew what the mission was they asked for it so <laughs> <laughs> um, while I haven't had that much fun um, with the with the law of cynicism, it is basically the same card under a different name, and that has a memory that's been with me and my group for decades, and those are the best kinds. Uh, so, yes, law of cynicism, absolutely love that card. Um, moving on. 18 come with me if the heroes are outnumbered play to have a mysterious stranger arrive and allow the heroes to escape in the scene immediately jay what are your thoughts on come with me i'm usually not very big on cards that end the scene immediately because it you know you could be in the middle of something very important uh but i think with this you probably have some way of mitigating it like at least figuring out where to go from there but it does have a prerequisite you do have to be outnumbered which usually is what usually happens because you know thralls you know be swarmed by but tharkold is actually one of the places where it doesn't always happen because techno demons are such like high octane threats that it's usually all of you versus like one so you're probably going to be playing this more when you're being swarmed by like ghouls or uh you know sort of more common enemies which means that the encounter is probably the kind of encounter that it's okay like story-wise to just end and wrap it up uh and then go it's it's not going to be the climatic boss battle probably you know so i give this one a little bit more wiggle room i think it's it's pretty good um i don't love it but I can live with this. <laughs> Mark, your thoughts on Come With Me. So, I'm not a big fan of this one for kind of the same reasons Jay is not a fan. Um, and and f for a few others. It, because it's a Heroes Are Outnumbered card, you've got to have, you've got to be in that situation where there are more foes than there are heroes. Well, Based on the way that that Torg threats are put together and the way missions and and scenes and encounters are, are run, you you throw a large number of mooks and lower tier threats at smaller numbers of storm knights, and those are typically the easier combats. While they seem like I'm outnumbered, oh crap, I should be worried about this. You know, you're taking down two and three and sometimes four and even five of the, the bad guys in a single, you know, shot because you're good at what you do and you've got possibilities to spend. So you, you spend them and you, again, you roll well and boom, dice explode and all of a sudden, bang, we drop five guys with a slice of our sword and suddenly the numbers are down and down and down and you're like, well, why do I want to escape from this? I'm handling it easily. So there's no, the only the only benefit that this card offers is get out of a sticky situation. And typically those happen, as Jay pointed out, in Tharkold against smaller numbers of superior foes. And so when you're not outnumbered, uh, all of a sudden this card's no longer useful. But that's probably in Tharkold where you're going to be in need of an escape is when you're facing the one or the two or the three bad guys instead of the, you know, 8, 12, or 16 bad guys, in my opinion. 
it would I would think that it would just be a better card if instead of if the heroes are outnumbered, it, it says something like outmatched, uh, because then outmatched can be one, you know, one alpha that is just beating the crap out of the heroes. You're outmatched. There's six of you, but one of him, and he is just thrashing you left and right, and you need to get the hell out of Dodge because otherwise it's going to be a TPK, so let's play this card. And you escape. I might let some, depending on the situation, I probably would let some leeway go on that outnumbered piece based on whether or not they were actually going to get their butt kicked and everybody's going to die or something like that. I don't know. But it's not my favorite. It's it's kind of reminiscent of you know the Terminator, mm -hmm. where Kyle Reese shows up you and says, come with really? me if you want to live, um, which is probably exactly what it was meant to be. <laughs> and then you know it's thematic, it's cinematic. It's fun. Everybody probably gets what it's from. I just wish it were. I, I just wish there was some other benefit that could be there, or it was better worded for you know any encounter instead of just I'm outnumbered. Yeah, um, going off with both of you have said about the a lot of times in Tharkhold when you're outnumbered, it's going to be a, an easier fight, if not an easy fight. So this is more of like the reduce tediousness card. Right. <laughs> you know, get out of a battle, we're going to win anyway card. Um, which then, if, if you're fighting, that's not going to be entertaining uh, you, you might have cut it to, to begin with and not need the card. But, yeah, it, it fits the, the theme, but I'm on the same thing that I don't think it's just a, a great card. It's almost similar to the close uh, close call, one of the two close calls that just allows you to sneak by a encounter. So sort of, sort of like that. And not quite like the Nile Empires, which usually have something like that happen. Um, where it's somebody's been knocked out or in a more dangerous situation. Okay. And you so do have to come up with a mysterious stranger, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next two cards, 19 and 20, are the same. Thark will do attack. And I will say, I do know the reason for this card. There is a uh, world law that on a mishap when casting a spells you're supposed to summon a techno demon and that rule i believe was in the game master section of the torg eternity rules but not in the player section and a lot of people didn't realize that that's what happened or they forgot that happened so these cards were introduced as a quote unquote replacement for that, very similar to how the demon attacks from Cyber Papacy work. Um, in my game, I do both because I never did forget that a mishap is going to summon a Tharkul do because mm -hmm. I love when that happens. And then when this card is out and they mishap um, just to, to make sure or something else happens, I've party is like summoned multiple <laughs> Tharkul do demons uh, with this. But it is a, a play when drawn, when a mishap is rolled, while you are an ally cast a spell in Tharkhold, a Techno Demon attacks. All Storm Knights gain one to three possibilities after the battle, depending on the strength of the Techno Demon. If there are no spellcasters in the group, discard and draw again. So, Jay, your thoughts on 19 and 20 Tharkhold do attack. Well, firstly, this is obviously a cyber papal demon, so I don't know uh, what it's doing in here. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's all right. Uh, I like Lehman. I also didn't forget about that rule normally, so I always had everyone in Tharkold being super paranoid about magic and spellcasters in general. So it was actually almost like the cyber papacy, where just regular Russian citizens would report any spellcasters, um, you know, just for their own safety, uh, you know, Volkov and propaganda, you know, running through there the whole time. Uh, and this, so this just doubled it up and we did have a spellcaster in my group uh, and they are the kind of person who does not care and will just still cast spells <laughs> as much as they want. So we did in fact get one combat which had two techno demons 
separately get summoned. <laughs> so, um, and like the second one, it took an extra round or two for them to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're like, what's going on? But um, the one thing that's good is when the Tharkold source book came out, there are like tiers of techno demons. Mm -hmm. So um, there's subs so that you don't have to use the just the one stat block from the, the core threat where having multiple would probably completely wreck a group. Uh, but now you can have like, if you just want it to, you know, just an accent on, hey, the, be careful, you can have a techno demon sub come in. If you you know, want it to be serious, you can have it be a regular techno demon, or you can have an alpha, or, you know, hey, Thrachin shows up, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Anything could happen. So yeah, these are good. The, because you can draw again if you don't have a spellcaster, then it's fine. That's always my biggest concern with mm -hmm. these kind of cards. Mark, your thoughts on Tharkaldu attack? Yeah, it's it's again this is kind of the the dino attacks of Tharkold um kind of thing but it's not really dino attacks it's the mishap part and sometimes your mishap range especially on some of the drama cards is expanded beyond just a one so it's to keep in mind what a mishap range is for uh any given moment and this could trigger um it is as jay pointed out it's great that this one says if there are no spell casters you could draw again so you got two opportunities if you don't have any spell casters to disc this back into the deck and get something else um that said why are you you know why is it that summoning a, a tharkoldu i get it in thar in cyber papacy i get that that spells how the spells and the the that whole thing works in the cyber papacy summoning a demon because the demon's not actually cyber papal agent it's a it's an agent of the cosm in the world laws right but the tharkoldu are a problem with magic they wish they had it more so than they do right aren't they they're pursuing all of that they hate humans casting magic and they see that as a yeah. threat to their dominance so their thing is i sense i, I believe in the original rule okay within a kilometer and that got changed. Yeah. So it was like if a like they can sense it, senses you mishap <laughs> in a kilometer, they are going to appear and kill you. It draws. You okay, so it it's drawn in a techno demon that's trying to snuff you out because you're using magic and you right. should. Okay, that's that's fair. Um, it's a good it, it's a good card. One to three possibilities again in how hard the threat is for you to deal with, mm -hmm. not necessarily what the threat is. Still a still the watchword that you know Liam and threw out there at the beginning of these things, I, and I still I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I didn't forget this card. The players liked because at least if this card was in play and they mishap, they got some possibilities where in the original right. world law they didn't. <laughs> so whether it was easy or difficult for them, they at least got the possibilities. So yeah, I. I like the card um, and all that stuff. So we will go ahead and end that here. We do thank you for tuning in and listening and or watching this episode. We'll be back with some Pan Pacifica Cosm cards next. And again, email us at torgdcd at gmail.com. We will read your emails, answer questions, make comments on your comments, etc. And until next time, we hope you have fun in your own Cosmverse. Bye. <laughs>